my attempt at a vegan and zero waste grocery haul. It was not completely successful. And I went to two different places and actually I feel like I had a lot of bad luck along the way. A lot of times when I try zero waste, it works out better, but I think I was cursed today. Today is cursed. Uh, so here we go. Um, I got in jars. I love getting salsa because A, salsa is delicious and B, um, I love the jars that are left over afterward. I often make like body lotion or a conditioner, things like that, um, that fit perfectly in these jars. The Simple Truth Organic brand was on sale, so I succumbed to that and bought two instead of just one. So I got the medium salsa and the black bean and corn salsa. I think I'm gonna make a kind of taco salad-y thing this week. And also in glass is some olive oil. I was totally out, so I got a brand new bottle of olive oil. I also brought my own jar with me to Kroger and got uh, peanut butter, filled it up with natural peanut butter, and I already had the tear weight written on the top from the last time I went to Whole Foods and got like almond butter or peanut butter or something like that. Um, I also in the bulk bins got some trail mix. Um, it was really inexpensive and I just needed something to snack on that would be kind of salty and sweet. I just realized probably the little candy chews maybe are like milk chocolate so I guess it's not vegan but it is zero waste in a bag that I brought myself. These bags actually came from Fresh Market. Sometimes I feel a little weird. This is from Fresh Market and I was using it at Kroger and I had Trader Joe's bag, which is adorable, with me at Rainbow Blossom, the other store I went to. And I always feel a little weird. It's like bringing in food from an outside place to a different restaurant. Let me know if you think that's a faux pas. Um, so I got the trail mix to have a snack and also in my own bag that I brought, I got some uh, sesame sticks, the salted sesame sticks. I'll insert a little clip here uh, of me getting the bulk so food so you can see how that works out, but I accidentally got the garlic ones first, so I had to read. Also, to really top off some of the troubles I had at Kroger, I did get these black beans. I got a lot more than this, but I spilled the beans in the parking lot getting into the car. So I'll show you a picture of that. Oh, and I also got this, these lemon ginger tea bags. I really should be getting loose leaf tea, but I just know that I love this flavor so much. I really need to start using up my loose leaf tea though. So this was kind of a fail um, at Kroger. What I also don't really consider a fail though are these sweet garden peas. This has been kind of the bane of my existence with zero waste is that um, there are a lot of dishes my best friend Dina in particular really loves peas and so I like making her things that have peas in them. But in August when I was trying plastic free for the first time, I learned that the peas that come in a can so are like better than these plastic things because theoretically you can recycle those, although apparently they're, they have BPA and they might be lined with plastic or wax themselves, but anyway. They don't taste the same, they're kind of gross. Um, so I did get the frozen peas. What are you gonna do? 
Um, so Kroger, as I'm going through Kroger, I was like, yay, yay, yes, yes, yes. And I was reminded yet again that they have actually kind of more zero waste options, at least here locally, than even Whole Foods. So you would expect Whole Foods for it to be easy there to get pretty zero waste options. Like this bread. So the bread that I try to get at Whole Foods, it's impossible to get it without packaging. I've even asked the lady there if I could get it without packaging, and she's like, what, you don't like plastic, so that's your deal? And, um, <laughs> and so at Whole Foods, it was like impossible. But here uh, at Kroger, I was like, okay, they have all these unwrapped um, in the bakery case. And so this one was labeled sunflower bread, but I couldn't find a number to give them or anything or like a barcode. Well, this is not <laughs> so yay, I found this bread unpackaged. Honestly, I didn't expect to be able to find it, so I didn't come prepared with something to wrap it in, and I really didn't want to use the things that they had there. So I didn't, and I just let it get germy and like tossed it in my cart. I know some people think that's gross. It doesn't really bother me though and I'm gonna like heat it up enough that I feel like the germs will be killed I don't know if that's a thing um but this so I got this bread they didn't have a number or anything so I just assumed when I get up to the register I'll be able to tell them like what kind of bread it is and it won't be a problem no of course I'm in line with like a thousand people behind me and a 12 year old cash cashier um not to be disparaging toward him, but anyway, um, he was stumped, didn't know what to do with this, and had to try to call a supervisor. The supervisors were taking forever to get there, and it's like they sell this, but they were having a hard time letting me actually buy it, and they're like, oh, next time, you know, you're supposed to use the little bag, and I'm like, no, I was trying not to use the bag. Like, I just want to buy it loose. If you sell this product, why can't you let me pay for it. So the same thing happened with the carrots, although I haven't shown you the produce yet, but I also had loose carrots and he also couldn't find a number for those because if they're um, not packaged, they usually come in a bunch and I was excited to find these because I feel like they're easier to use if you're gonna chop them up because they're nice and thick so it's not as much peeling involved. So that was an issue. Um, so the bread, and then that's when I spilled the beans after that, so I was very disheartened from that trip. Um, the next spot I hit up, oh, that's where actually the, the sesame sticks came from, was Rainbow Blossom, our wonderful local um, health food store, and I do try to patronize them when I can, but they are on the expensive side, so it's not always that simple. So there, I made a bad decision. I shouldn't do packaged foods like this, but occasionally I need to be able to grab something. This is horrible, but I just need to be able to grab something when I get really hangry and I don't feel like making something or I just don't even feel like making the things that I ate. I know that sounds really entitled, but these are my like backup meals. They do come in a lot of packaging, but there are these vegetable pot pies, the Amy's brand. It's hard to find the vegetable, the dairy-free vegetable pot pies at a lot of other stores, even the ones who carry a lot of Amy's products. So I go there, I kind of can't pass it up. So I did kind of stock up on these, and I also got another uh, like emergency meal of frozen pizza. So I'm not totally zero waste yet. Those are my kind of concessions that I make. I also, and I'll show you a picture of me trying to decide between my tried and true Dr. Bronner's uh, Peppermint Castile Soap Bar, which does come in packaging, but it's just a little paper, so it's easier to deal with than plastic, or they have these loose ones at Rainbow Blossom uh, that didn't have any packaging at all. I don't know if I like it as much. So I took a chance and got this only to have the cashier while I was looking up the photo of the plu number that I took down for the sesame sticks. She put it in a paper bag, which is probably even more plastic than the Dr. Bronner's one. So I tried to do the right thing and it kind of back 
fired. Um, so it's not all or nothing, you do what you can, right? Um, so that covers all of the uh, non-produce stuff. So I think you saw the produce things in the other picture. So we already talked about the loose carrots. I got two big bunches of bananas. I got ones that aren't very ripe yet, so they'll last for later. Hopefully they'll get ripe, and they're not the organic kind. They just last longer, and luckily they don't come with that plastic packaging around it like the organic ones do. A lot of people talk about this um, issue online, um, but these at least don't have a whole lot of the plastic that they sometimes put at the stem, which I know people have been complaining about in the zero waste community that they're plastic free efforts, usually uh, they, they also want to be organic and it's kind of hard to merge the two interests. So I did get one bunch where they're nice and spotty when they're sweet and good. Um, I got some romaine lettuce, loose, yes I let it get all the germs from the shopping cart, as well as broccoli, tomatoes, spinach, my receipt goes floating down an onion, uh, some corn. This is going to be the first time that I try package-free uh, corn where I'm not going to actually eat it on the cob. So I'm going to actually try to uh, like take the corn kernels off of the cob and put it in like a taco salad. I don't know if a lot of people do that. I don't know if it's going to feel like it's a lot of extra time, but at least, you know, this comes in its own packaging. I already showed you more broccoli. I got a loose cucumber, and this is kind of a sacrifice for me because I've learned that I love the taste of those English cucumbers. They always come individually wrapped in plastic, though, and they're more expensive. So this is a cheaper and package-free option with the cucumber. I splurged on some heirloom tomatoes because I figure hopefully that season is coming. They'll even be better next month. But it is June, so I had to try some heirlooms. Our farmer's market doesn't open until next week. So uh, starting then, I'll try to get that stuff from there. And I got a sweet potato. This is also kind of an emergency sort of meal. So there's my zero waste vegan-ish grocery haul. Thanks for watching. <laughs>